Hi, welcome to Border Crossings. My name is Larry London, and I'll be your host as we welcome singer-songwriter Brooke Annabelle to the studio today. Brooke grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, writing her first song at 15 and releasing her first album two years later. After college, Brooke Annabelle graduated with a degree in music business, and then in 2015, she released her fourth full studio album. Her music has been featured on the MTV show One Tree Hill, along with a variety of other TV shows. And today, Brooke Annabelle joins us to talk about the new album and sing songs off the CD. Plus, we'll discuss her current tour. This is Border Crossings. Hi, my name is Larry London, and I welcome you to Border Crossings. Brooke Annabelle is on tour right now promoting a brand new album. She tells me it's album number four. We're going to talk to Brooke and find out more about her new album and her current tour. So we welcome Brooke Annabelle to D.C. and to the Voice of America. Yeah, thank you for having me today. It's wonderful to see you in person. I've been listening to your CD, and I love the sound. Great, thank you. And I know that uh, the people apply the term folk to your music right and how does that make you feel i mean based on what i read you're kind of like folk me folk yeah uh i think it's it is definitely i'm very inspired by folk music so but i think i i tend to err on the pop side of folk so it's a little more pop folk a little more singer songwriter um so yeah i i welcome the the term folk to my music and you started off writing songs when you were Growing up in Pittsburgh, I guess. Yes. And so the process then turned into playing guitar. and Yeah, I started writing lyrics when I was just like in elementary school um, for I don't know what what caused me to start doing that silly lyrics that really, you know, what can you be inspired by when you're nine years old? I'm not sure. But um, when it got a little more serious, when I started to have all those, you know, teenage emotions, I, I thought, well, I want to pick up a guitar and start to learn songs. So guitar was my natural inclination because it was in my family. My grandfather played guitar. My uncle plays guitar. Um, so it was sort of the, the way to go towards songwriting for me. So I started taking lessons around 15 and and I've been doing it ever since. And now with the new CD, which it, it, it's your fourth, but actually your second studio album. Right, yeah. And how is this different from your other mu music that you've written and recorded so far? Well, I feel like when I was younger, I was just kind of figuring out my sound, but I did it in a very more public way because I just wanted to start getting music out as, as, it, as it happened. But um, after college, I started working in a studio in Nashville called The Smokestack. Um, and I started working with my friend who I went to college with, uh, and he produced this, this new album. And it's been a really great collaboration between the two of us. I think we, we really work well together as far as communicating just the vision for the production of the music and I've been really involved in the last two projects as far as is how I, I see that going and mm -hmm. um, so both projects have turned out really uh, really great hmm. I'm interested to know you, you made the move to Nashville which is something that every musician dreams of doing either New York Los Angeles or Nashville yeah music city it wasn't your vibe? It wasn't your thing? You returned back to Pittsburgh? I mean, I love Nashville. Um, I lived there. I went to college there, um, and then I moved back to Pittsburgh, and then I moved back to Nashville um, for about two years, and then I've recently moved back to Pittsburgh. And, you know, my whole family is in Pittsburgh, and so that that's definitely the main drawback. Um, but also, you know, Nashville is is where I I got my start. It's where I met a lot of the people that I still work with, and and where I've recorded, you know, three releases. And uh, it's definitely become a home for recording. But I didn't feel it necessary to be there twenty four seven. Um, so there's definitely no like hard feelings about Nashville. I just, you know, I've really enjoyed being home in Pittsburgh with my family. I have a, a brand new nephew. And it's been uh, it's been great to have that sort of work life balance um, that I didn't really have in Nashville. Go so. Steelers! Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and, I, and I also noticed that uh, I mean what I read was that you you had kind of a, a dry period uh, where songs weren't coming to you so easily, but yeah. you've gotten inspiration from some of the the moving that you've done. Yeah, I uh, it seems like anytime I go through a lot of changes in my life, that's when I start to really write a lot and. And there was a period of maybe, you know, six, eight months where I felt like I just wasn't writing anything that I liked that was inspiring me. 
Um, and it, you have you have to like it first of all because you're going to be playing it for years if you if you <laughs> do. <laughs> um, so uh, it took a while, but uh, I finally sort of broke that spell with uh, the song "Remind Me," which is on the new album. And then after that came sort of all the rest of the songs. It was sort of a confidence issue at that point where I was like, uh, "Am I ever going to write something that I like again?" Um, but that song really broke that that spell for me a lot of people who you know i mean we're not songwriters we can't relate to the writer's block or or a brain freeze kind of situation where things just aren't coming to you yeah how do you get yourself out of that um i think it's just sort of you know the same as any rut you might get into with any field of work where you just have to get up and keep trying and and hopefully something will will come along i mean obviously creative work requires some sort of inspiration but sometimes it doesn't just come flooding in you have to s seek it out mm -hmm. you know so so i guess i just you know kept trying kept mm -hmm. listening to new music that would hopefully spark something um but yeah you just got to keep going for it i guess have you ever gotten inspiration for a song that kind of surprised you that you said well i didn't expect to be inspired by that but an idea came yeah. from it yeah i guess um for the most part, it's pretty direct as far as lyrics go, but um, it is interesting to see, you know, what kind of, whether it's a live show or a new album, what I'll be influenced by musically, because it's all across the board. If anyone says, you know, what are you influenced by? It's really hard for me to answer that mm -hmm. question um, just because it's so far across the board, whether it's something that's very indie pop mm -hmm. or it's really folk, you know, so mm -hmm. i feel like I sort of fuse all of those things together a bit. And you don't like the label. You don't like a label or I being mean, labeled. I don't mind a label. I feel like people kind of need it to put their, their brain in, in one place about mm -hmm. what I am or what they should expect. So it's it's okay. Would you say folk <laughs> is then the accurate label you'd choose or is yeah. there something else you'd like to be known for? I guess I usually say folk pop. Folk pop. Yes. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, you know, Brooke Annabelle's here, and she's got her guitar, so we're going to put you to work, if you wouldn't mind singing a song for us. Sure, yeah. This uh, first song I'm going to do is called Find My Way. Well, I wish that I could stay here a little too long like the world would wait if everything went wrong But I know that I can't tell you about all the things running through my head But, ooh, you keep me hanging on Ooh, when I can't find Keep me hanging on 
Annabelle, live here on Border Crossings. The album's called The Simple Fear. Now, you started singing, I guess, around 14, put out the first album a few years later. What were you listening to at the time? What what inspired you? Um, in You mean in uh, high school? Yeah, like as the, a 14 year old yeah. who started singing, what kind of music yeah. were you playing at home? I guess right around then, I, you know, once I picked up a guitar, I started noticing really good guitar players. And so right around that time was when, um, like, John Mayer started coming out. And I was a big fan of his. I was a big fan of, you know, other female singer songwriters like Michelle Branch. Um, but also that was right around the time that Nora Jones started coming out. And and as a 16 or 17 year old, people would say, oh, you sound like Nora Jones. And I would feel very complimented by that. Um, but yeah, I from a very young age, I started listening to the Beatles. Uh, my aunt and uncle introduced me to them. It was something where I was like, oh, I'm a really big fan of the monkeys and I'm really loyal to the monkeys. And they said, you know, if you like the monkeys, you might like the Beatles. And so they started playing me the Beatles really young. And it might sound like a cliche inspiration, but I mean, there's so much to love about the Beatles that it's just never ending mm-hmm. sort of through my through my life. But yeah, those are that's like who I was listening to. Around what a then. diverse background. I mean, oh, to go from thanks. the monkeys to John Mayer <laughs> to Nora Jones. It's yeah, kind of all over the place. But that you, you found your lane that you're most comfortable in now. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and you've defined your sound now in 2012. You got an award from the Independent Music Association. Yeah, that was for the album that I released in, in 2011. And I just sort of submitted it on a whim and it got um, it didn't win the actual prize but it was uh voted on by the public as the popular vote which Mm -hmm. is pretty exciting i guess because that means that that lots of people liked it so um yeah that was a really great honor and so as an independent artist you have much more control over your music i would assume uh, you know on the benefit column yeah if a major came along is that something you have a, a dream and aspiration for or are you happy doing what you're doing it's not something i would like turn away from for sure but uh yeah it's it's i've always had sort of a interest in the business side of music um i actually studied music business in college um and so i i still run a lot of aspects of my career but i i sort of um will hire on different people to be part of the team and Um, that's really great when I get to work with other people that are just as excited about the music. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's nothing that's sort of off the table as far as like the next opportunity goes. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for right now being independent is, is really exciting and Mm -hmm. and fun for me. And you got your degree at Belmont and studied, you know, your, as you said, music business. So you made the decision to go on the stage in front of the cameras rather than be the business person behind the scenes. Yeah, and I sort of always had that intention of just wanting to know how to 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 be a better independent artist or just to know how things worked. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't really interested in going for music. It just kind of intimidated me just to study th- all the theory sides of everything for whatever reason that intimidated mm-hmm. me. But, um, but music business sounded like something like I could really get involved in a lot of different aspects and, and intern at different companies. And um, I was I was really pleased with my experience there and, and my decision to mm-hmm. do that. So, so did you intern and work at some, some record company? Yeah, I, I interned at, um, well, most of the, the industry in Nashville, the scene is very different. There's a lot going on in Nashville other than, but the industry is, is very like country and uh, contemporary Christian centric. So I interned at a, a Christian label. I interned at a, um, a sort of a songwriters association international down there. And also at a management company that, that managed at the time they managed like nickel Creek and the black keys. So mm-hmm. that was really fun experiences for me. What would you say would be the biggest surprise from what you had thought, but you found not to be what you thought about the about business? This whole business. Or... Yeah. The way the business works. Um, I don't know. I guess I was probably pretty naive about it in the beginning to, to some extent, but, um, I think probably when I was, when I was in high school, I used to think that venues would just want to book me if they liked my music, but really it's just about how many people you can bring out. So I used to think, Oh, I just have to be really good and they'll want to book me, but I really have, you have to work towards getting a draw and that's all your responsibility, you know? So 
I think that was probably one of the most naive thoughts that I had hmm. about booking, at least. Talking to Brooke Annabelle, who's here in our studios for The Simple Fear, which is the second full-length studio album, the uh, official second studio album. And so uh, we're going to ask if you do another song for us. Sure. Um, this, next, this next song is called uh, Decide. called Decide. It's Brooke Annabelle here live on Border Crossing. So tell me, I mean, where'd you just, you know, what, what the story behind that song? Where'd you get the inspiration to write that? How'd it come to you? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I had a relationship end, if that didn't sound <laughs> obvious enough in that song. And, and also I was just writing a, a lot um, at that time. And, and that chorus kind of just spilled out of me. And I thought, usually the chorus is the hardest part to write about a song. And that was the first thing to come for this song. And I, I felt really, really good about um I thought it was a really strong chorus, and so I just kind of followed it. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a tough time, but also a, a, a um, 
really inspirational time as well. Those changes really stir up the creative right. spirit. <laughs> well, Taylor Swift is, you know, obviously right. someone who's gotten a lot of attention for writing music about ex-boyfriends. Yeah. So, I mean, are you in the same situation on the relationship driven, you know, a situation will inspire a song and that's where it comes out of because yeah. of an actual personal heartbreak or difficult situation. Yeah. I think all of my songs are, are really pretty personal. Um, Sometimes I'm not even sure at the time what I'm writing them about. And then they come to, mm -hmm. you know, I realize a couple months later, ah, I was writing it about this. But also it's not always just romantic relationships. It's, you know, family relationships or just um, just observations of the feelings that I'm processing about mm -hmm. life and expectations and realities and, and just new things that I need to process. It's always kind of been my therapeutic process. Do, do any of the ex-boyfriends call and say, Brooke, is that about me? No, no. <laughs> Not yet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Why did you call it uh, the simple fear? Um, that's sort of, you know, what I was a little bit just talking about is that um, so there's in within the first track on the new album, there's the line, the simple fear. And uh, I realized as I was, you know, processing all these different um changes and and feelings about life in general that um you know we all have certain fears in common and so while fear is never simple it's it's sort of comforting to know that we all sort of face these different expectations and and whether that's about our careers or our relationships or our families or just sort of the the path that we're on and that that it becomes simple because we're kind of all facing these these fears mm -hmm whether it's different times in our life or, um, but yeah, so I called it the simple fear cause I'd never really heard someone describe fear as simple, but it, it kind of is when you think of it that way. And you had mentioned that it wasn't always music. What were you thinking of doing before this idea came into your head? Um, before the idea of, of actually becoming a performer, recording music, releasing albums, you said um, it wasn't always going to be this. But... Well, uh, I don't, I actually don't know. There wasn't anything else besides mm. music since I was 14 or 15. I mean, when I sort of confronted going to college, I thought about just being a business major and, mm -hmm. and just doing something like that. But it was, it's always actually kind of been going for... Part of the plan. Yeah. And yeah. your name, your last name, you were telling me before we started... You're Italian? You have Italian well, blood in you? Yeah, at this I mean at this point, you know, I'm a quarter Italian, a quarter Russian, a quarter German, a quarter English. But my my dad's, you know, name is is Italian and uh should have been a Nibale, I suppose. Um I learned that when I went to Disney World and I went to Epcot and we ate in the uh Italian restaurant and they pronounced our name a Nibale. And I thought, what, you know, what? And my dad said, yeah, that's how <laughs> that's it, it would be Back said. That's it, the old country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty interesting way to learn about my, my family heritage, I guess. <laughs> Are you touring internationally or is this tour just in the U.S.? Just in the U.S. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, hopefully one day. Um, I've been uh, to Europe several times, but no extensive tours yet. Mm -hmm. And if people want to buy your CD, I assume, on your website, along with Amazon and iTunes, but what would be your website? Uh, my website is just brookannabelle dot com, um, and it is on, it's on iTunes, uh, Amazon, Spotify, all of those mm -hmm. things. But um, but physical copies are available through my website. Mm -hmm. And Annabelle spelled A N N I B A L E. Yes. So don't forget that as you're typing it in on your yeah. computer to to pick up the new album. Would you do one more song for us? Sure, of course. Um, this last song is the one that broke the the writing drought for me. It's called Remind Me. Just out, wait a minute, let me talk. Words twisted in a night. We were nothing like we thought. Just remind me, it only takes a second. See, I'm sorry. 
jaded everything I've got We were nothing like I thought Just remind me It only takes a second to say I'm sorry Beautiful song. Thank you. So what is it about, what happened that caused you to write that song that got you out of your, your drought? That was the uh, one that I, I sort of sat down to write and just sort of went by melody and just found the lyrics and then months later realized that I had written it about a situation, but it wasn't specifically, it was almost like a subconscious mm-hmm. writing at the time. So um, yeah, I I guess it's about an argument and just sort of taking the time to realize it doesn't take very much to apologize whichever side you're on so yeah we have a nice sound very nice sound. thank you so much easy to listen to and you know i know the words are heartfelt so thank you very much for coming on the show thank you for having me and for performing for us uh, brooke annabelle and the simple fear is the name of the new album my name is larry london and this is border crossings 